whenever you come up with any idea for a movement that's going to affect, presumably, either the majority or all of society, you're going to have dissent. You're going to have people who either don't agree with what you're doing, um, are actively hostile to what you're doing, are indifferent to what you're doing, or are unable to grasp what you're doing. Simply don't can't don't get what it, the thrust of your utopian idea or revolutionary idea is. It's just something that sort of goes over their head. That's, I think, where utopia fails. Um, how do you deal with that? Uh, the utopians of the past have said, well, we have unpleasant tasks that we have to do to deal with these people. Shoot them, uh, put them in camps, isolate them from the rest of society. Generally, they're some sort of placard or other is hung around their neck to sort of say these people aren't going along with this idea. And we've established that this is a wonderful idea that we have, and anyone who doesn't go along with it is therefore uh, fundamentally flawed or fundamentally deserving of a guilty verdict to be placed upon them. That's what that placard essentially is. The, the dissenter is... Um, just by being what he is or she is, is somehow guilty in a fundamental sense of something, counter-revolution, um, being uh, an untermensch or uh, an imperialist, or so, any, any number of these things. In the past it was a heretic, um, or you know, colloquially in the postmodern sort of language, it's uh, a uh, thought criminal. Thought criminals are simply going to arise no matter what you do, or it certainly looks that way. And we're never going to get um, a wide enough consensus to establish any kind of a utopia. Um, or at least it looks that way. What do you do about that fact? How do you avoid um, falling back on denunciation and coercion when you're trying to build a utopia? I'm not sure that you can avoid these things. Um, it always seems to creep into the discourse. Uh, we've all seen how things like the idealistic colonies of religious dissenters that were formed in the east coast of what is now the United States in the 17th century ended up having all these literally witch hunts. Uh, French Revolution lopped off a whole pile of heads terror became state policy. The Russian Revolution, um, the Gulag, uh, the Nazis were going to build this racial super state, and we know what kind of a nightmare that resulted in. It seems to be that guilt and coercion, um, and guilt of the projected kind, as, uh, as in, you're the bad guy, uh, or that's the bad guy and we've got to deal with him before we actually manage to perfect society. Uh, it just seems to be an, an inevitable byproduct of any kind of, or perhaps an uninvited guest at the utopian banquet. Um, you don't like me, but I'm the secret police and I'm ultimately what makes all of this possible. Um, I do unpleasant work, but I'm a firm resolve, and I understand that what I'm doing is necessary, etc., etc. That's generally how coercive apparatuses um, portray themselves. It's an unpleasant job, but it's got to be done, and I just show how loyal I am to the ideal by doing this hellish job, being, say, a concentration camp guard or something like that. And the impetus behind that, of course, is guilt. Some people deserve to be treated this way, or even if they don't deserve, the, the means are justified by the ends, because we know where all this is going. Utopia just seems to spawn this, and there doesn't seem to be any way to avoid that, which is why I guess we have turned our backs decisively as human beings on utopia. Um, the closest thing that I've had to a, a sort of sustained debate with utopians here on YouTube is uh, my notorious um, 
interaction with the antinatalist group, and they rely heavily upon denunciation, and uh, they deal with dissent generally by demonizing anybody who disagrees with them, uh, mentally ill or just plain bastards, the way that it's often described. You're just fundamentally um, malevolent or deficient or something, just an asshole. Uh, no, no other, uh, no other explanation is required. That's, you know, that's the the guilting that inevitably takes place when you're trying to build a utopia, and it, it illustrates very effectively the frustration that sincere utopians often feel when they run up against human realities. Um, I've studied the career of Joseph Stalin, and he's come down to us as possibly the most bloodthirsty tyrant of the 20th century, maybe in human history. Uh, his body count was certainly um, in excess of that of Hitler's. But if you actually look at his, auto his biographies and things like that, and people who actually spoke to him, and in as much as anyone was capable of knowing the guy, there was a large amount of frustration and anger. What is the matter with these people? I'm trying to help them. I'm trying to build a society in which uh, we can banish forever things like poverty and, and want and all the terrible things that I knew when I was young. Now, of course, there was, I'm sure, in his mental and emotional makeup, plenty of just plain megalomania and sadism. But there was an awful lot of that frustration. Um, what's the matter with these people? Why don't they get it? All right, I didn't want to do this, but I'll just have to call the secret police and they'll help me build this utopia. Um, we've got to decide what we want and why we want a certain utopia. And we've got to decide in advance what means are acceptable to get there. And I think that if we rule certain means sort of out of bounds, we end up basically making a utopia impossible. Um, is a utopia with wide dissent possible? <laughs> um, and in what sense would that even be a utopia? Uh, 